Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, claying up and then quenching a katana. It's recently become cool to clay harden all kinds of pointy things, but Japanese smiths came up with this technology about a thousand years ago. What's the trick? Well, before we get the what, we'll get into the why. To start with, a sword is not like a knife. You can chop away on any reasonable target with a decently made small knife with little chance of actually breaking the blade in half. But the forces involved when you swing a sword are at least an order of magnitude greater than they are with short blades. The length and leverage of a sword allows you to swing it at a very high rate of speed into some sort of fairly unyielding target, by the way, presumably an angry dude covered with armor. So, there's potentially fatal damage to the edge if the sword isn't hard enough to hack into rigid targets without getting dented all to hell. But there's even more to it than that. The mass of the sword itself is actually part of the equation. If you've ever seen a super slow-mo of a sword getting whacked into something, you'll be amazed at how much the sword bends as the inertia of the blade tries to keep that blade moving after it hits the target. This creates all kinds of wobbling and bending, which in turn create compressive and worse tensile strains that can easily rip a blade in half. So an ideal sword is both very hard and capable of shock resistance two qualities which are at war with each other. A really hard sword will be brittle and subject to cracking, but a really soft and shock-resistant sword will dent every time you hit something hard. It's an engineering conundrum. The ancient Japanese smith's solution to this conundrum is to basically split the blade down the middle into two zones, a hard edge and a soft, shock-resistant spine. I don't mean the blade's literally separated, but what happens is that, in essence, there are two heat treating regimes that are implemented in one stage. Here's how it's done. A clay material is applied to the spine of the blade and allowed to dry. Traditionally, they use pottery clay and limestone and all kinds of ash, all sorts of things mixed together. I use a modern refractory cement, but the principle is exactly the same as the one developed a thousand years ago in Japan. After drying, the blade's heated and plunged into water. If high carbon steel is cooled extremely rapidly, it converts to a very hard form of steel known as martensite, and this is what you want for a cutting edge. If it cools a little slower, it converts to a softer, more shock-resistant form of steel known as perlite. The clay retains enough heat so that the cooling of the steel beneath it is retarded significantly and it doesn't harden. The result, hard martensitic edge, soft perlitic spine. The zone between the hard and soft areas shows up after polishing as a bright white line known as a hamon, one of the distinctive features of the Japanese sword. On the way to developing this technique, Japanese smiths also developed unique hamon designs that served as signatures of a particular school, particular regions, particular sword makers, whatever. complete, it's time to quench the katana. A waiting trough of heated water stands by for the blade to be plunged into. After preparations for the quench are finished, I'll heat the blade to around 1500 Fahrenheit in my forge. If the blade's too hot, it's likely to crack, too cool, and it won't harden at all. The temperature must be relatively even across the entire blade. If not, the hardening will be uneven and it may bend too much or too little 
or a number of other potential problems. At the precise moment when the entire blade has been heated to the correct temperature, I'll plunge the blade into the water. The edge hardens within a matter of seconds, stresses in the blade created by the quench, causing it to bow by nearly an inch, bringing it to the characteristic Japanese blade curvature. Now we'll show essentially what it looks like when it comes out. This isn't the exact same sword as the one in the quench. I haven't finished polishing that one yet, but it shows you the basic idea of how they come out. So I hope you enjoyed this window into making Japanese swords. It's a really deep subject. Uh, and by the way, I've got a bunch of videos that are available that take a much deeper dive into the whole subject of making Japanese blades that's available on my website, waltersorrelsblades.com. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>